the seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Another year, another Flare release. Here's what's new in Flare 12. First, responsive content for HTML5 output just got way easier with Flare's new responsive layout window pane. This feature lets you create a responsive grid to hold all kinds of content. The layout shifts and changes depending on the size of the screen, so on a large monitor, your content might look like this. On a tablet, the content might adjust to look like this. And on a smartphone, the content would look like this. This is a simple system designed for authors who want to produce responsive content easily. It uses a combination of media queries and styles to quickly create different configurations for different screen sizes. Even if you're not familiar with media queries and you're still a novice at styles, you can create your own responsive layouts in a matter of minutes with this window pane. The responsive layout window pane is tightly integrated with both your HTML5 skin and the XML editor. In your target, you provide tablet and mobile settings to tell Flare at what point your skin should be responsive. These are the same settings used for your responsive content layouts. This helps to keep everything nicely in sync with the output. And when you move from web to tablet to mobile in the window pane, the layout mode and medium also change in the XML editor. This means you can edit your content with the tablet or mobile maximum width right in front of you. And since we mentioned styles, that's also another big change in Flare 12. If you open a style sheet in the advanced view of the style sheet editor, you'll notice some major enhancements. Right away, you'll see that things just look different. The editor has been redesigned to make it even easier to find, select, and change style properties. One of the coolest changes in this editor is the ability to open and edit multiple mediums at the same time. Check it out. Each medium shows properties in its own panel. Not only that, but the panels are synchronized. So if you expand a property group in one medium, it expands in the others. This helps you see the values that each medium has for a particular property. It also lets you know if a setting in a particular medium is being inherited. Also, now you can create more kinds of styles, and you can create more advanced ones, too. This includes all kinds of pseudo-classes and elements, as well as style IDs. In addition to mediums, you can now also create media queries. So if you decide you need more than just the standard tablet and mobile media queries, you can create more of them as necessary. And there are a lot more style-related enhancements that we don't even have time to tell you about here. Multilingual support is also new to Flare 12. This is a really great feature if you need to produce multiple versions of your documentation in different languages. For example, you might be writing in English, but you also have your project translated into Spanish, French, and Arabic. With your English Flare project working as the master, you open your target and create links to the three Flare projects containing translated content in the other languages. When you generate the target in your master project, all of the targets are merged into one seamless output. In online output, the documentation opens in whatever language is set for that computer. For HTML5 output, you can even provide a drop-down in your output for readers to switch from one language to another. For PDF output, the different languages are automatically stitched together, one language after the other. And while we're talking about language support, you'll notice that language skins have undergone some enhancements. They're now stored within your project, rather than outside of it, and a new language skin editor makes it easy to modify them. The next new feature in Flare 12 has to do with PDF and Word output. When building PDF and Word targets, you can now preserve any tracked changes. This will be very useful to anyone using these outputs as part of a review process. In addition, you can now use change bars to identify new, revised, or deleted content. Fans of snippets in Flare will be happy to see some new features. First of all, you can now pin your favorite snippets in the interface. This makes it much easier to find and select the snippets you tend to use the most. Also, the idea of snippet conditions has been taken to the next level. Now you can use snippet conditions at the snippet level rather than just at the topic level. Doing this allows you to use different versions of the same snippet in a single topic. It also just might create a black hole or a parallel universe. We are looking into that. We've also added the ability to override definitions for variables and snippets. It's pretty cool. And here's a quick rundown of some of the other new features in Flare 12. Flare is now a 64-bit application. This provides better access to your computer's RAM and basically means that Flare will run faster and more efficiently. So yay! How about conditions? 
Well, you can now set conditions on glossary terms. Not only that, but you can set them on styles as well. Then there are glossary changes. This includes more control over glossary terms by ignoring the case of words, and also by including all variations of a term, such as singular and plural. There's also the ability to sort glossary terms, and for glossary term links, you can select any glossary term for any selected text. Linking also got better in Flare 12. When you create different kinds of links, such as cross-references and text hyperlinks, you can now point to styles as the destination in a content file. Flare will automatically create a bookmark accordingly, so that you don't have to. Flare has always allowed you to place page breaks on your styles, but now you can use a button on the Insert ribbon to quickly insert a page break that is independent of any HTML tag. You can also set conditions on these page breaks so that they're used in some print outputs, but not in others. Source control is another area that has seen some enhancements in Flare 12. This includes the ability to disconnect from source control and work in offline mode. Then, you can reconnect later on. We've also enhanced the Publishing Destination feature in Flare, which now lets you publish output to a source control location. Interested in doing some advanced sorting of the tables in your project? Flare 12 now has that capability. We also heard from many people who wanted to be able to insert variables into more places in a project. So now you can insert variables, well, all over the place, in glossary terms, slideshows, image properties, index links, skin captions, targets, and on and on and on. Those are just some of the new features in this release of Flare. There are many others we haven't even touched on here. For a more complete list of new features, see the What's New topic in the online help. Enjoy the new Flare 12. Mm -hmm.